Hi, this is Joshua Kulp. We are learning Daf Shui, Daf Lamed Dalet of Masechet Kedushin. I apologize that this video is a week late, but uh, I got caught up with things here while I'm spending my summer in the United States. Uh, the nice view behind me is the beautiful woods of Connecticut. Um, in any case, we are learning um, really one of the most uh, uh, familiar general principles in the Talmud, one that anybody who has encountered uh, some changes in modern Judaism probably knows about, and that is the notion that women are exempt from positive time-bound commandments. Positive meaning it's something that you have to do, and it's not a negative commandment, something you're not allowed to do. And it's a time-bound commandment, meaning there's a specific time in the day, in the year, uh, that the mitzvah has to be performed. Uh, some of the... Um, uh, Examples are sukkah, lulav, uh, and tefillin, shofar. Those are the more um, well-known examples. They're listed in our sugya. Um, and I want to just make a couple notes on this because I think it's something that's relevant and a lot of people talk about. A lot of the audience that I'm speaking to on this video either um, lives in egalitarian communities um, or uh, certainly lives in communities that probably are aware of uh, egalitarianism, are considering becoming more egalitarian. Um, in other words, I'm imagining that um, Probably not that many people watching these videos are living in Haredi or ultra or very right-wing Orthodox communities. Um, there may be some people who are in modern Orthodox communities or conservative communities or unaffiliated kind of communities, all of which um, egalitarianism is either a basic principle or something that we're taught that people are thinking about. So just a couple um, notes um, on some thoughts on this. First of all, it's important to note that prayer, tefillah, is not listed here. Um, when, uh, when you read the Mishnah in Brachot, the first chapter in Brachot, or is it the second chapter? I'm forgetting. Anyway, the Mishnah in Brachot list says that women are chayavot in prayer. Women are obligated in tefillah. Tefillah is not a, considered a positive time-bound commandment, perhaps either because that Mishnah does not fit the rules, or perhaps... Um, Prayer is not time-bound. Prayer can be done at any time of the day. So, um, historically speaking, eventually women were sort of excluded or excluded themselves, it's a little hard to tell, from the obligations or the strict obligations of prayer, but uh, realistically speaking, women are obligated for tefillah, for three times a day of prayer. I'm not talking about the Kriya Shema, okay? I'm talking about prayer and not Shema. Shema is a positive time-bound commandment. There are times during the day when you have to say Shema, and it's, it's really limited in time. Um, the second interesting thing to talk about is this rule descriptive or prescriptive. It sounds a lot from our sugya like it is descriptive, and that, that's because there are many exceptions, right? That's basically what our sugya talks about. All the exceptions, how come there are so many exceptions? What do we do with these exceptions? Um, it doesn't sound like um, the rule was prescriptive, except I, I might say that there is some logic in the reason of the rule. Um, generally speaking, if you ask people, why are women exempt from these commandments? And, and the answer often would seem to be something like their time is not fully theirs in their society in which the Talmud existed and the, and, and the Mishnah. Women were not always in control of their time. Uh, they often had husbands, fathers who were sort of, um, I don't want to say uh, their masters, but really controlled their time and therefore they did not necessarily have the ability to devote the time to these particular commandments. I don't think that's a full explanation. I think that there are, um, uh, uh, there is a little bit of an element of um, the men being at the top of the religious ladder and that your expression of who you are in the religious ladder is expressed by the performance of some of these particularly public mitzvot, such as uh, uh, shofar, maybe lulav, maybe even kriyat shema and uh, sukkah, um, and that uh, being fully obligated in things that show that you have the luxury of dedicating your time to something may be a way of showing that, at least in the rabbinic mind, at the top of the social ladder were free adult males. Uh, but there is probably something prescriptive in the sense that these are mitzvot that are harder for women or were harder for women to uh, perform. Um, the third note I want to note is that the, the um, not being obligated in something does not mean that you cannot perform it. Uh, there is a dispute among Sephardim and Ashkenazim whether or not mitzvah, uh, women 
bless Asher Kitzanu Bisaba Sivanu Al, for instance, Nitirat Lulav, taking the Lulav, on a mitzvah in which they're exempt for. Ashkenazim say that they can say the Bracha, and Aspardim say that they do not say the Bracha. There is no one in classical halacha says that women are prohibited from performing these mitzvot. Um, there are some modern uh, thinkers who say women should not, but strictly prohibited is really against halachic discourse. Um, and the fourth thing just to note is that there are a lot, of course, modern conservative um, and, and, and modern orthodox to vote now about these um, topics. The general tack that I've seen mostly in the conservative chew vote is uh, one of two tacks. One is to say that women can take on positive time-bound commandments voluntarily and then taken on as if they're obligated. Um, that school was largely represented by Rabbi Joel Roth of the Jewish Theological Seminary. And um, I think a more like prevalent approach, certainly around non-halachic thinkers, but even among post scheme, is to find something like well, this is what's reflective. The Talmud reflects the social hierarchy of the time. In our social world, women are not, or at least certainly should not, be treated as inferior, socially inferior, however you want to say it, inferior to men. And therefore, um, our religious lives should reflect the social world in which we live, in which uh, women are seen, rightfully so, to be equal to men and have equal opportunities. Um, that's probably a position that more resonates with me, but um, I will admit that it does not resonate with all halachic thinkers. Um, and you'll find that approach, I think, underlying a lot of modern thought on the issue. So I hope it's something you think about. The page uh, has a lot of technical midrashic detail to it, but it's a very interesting and important call.